This is the first question from the Unit 1 FRQ short answer paragraphs. Um, we've got a uniform bar of mass M with seven evenly spaced holes held together by sliding the bar over a horizontal peg through one of the holes. You really need to look at the figure for this. The peg passes through hole C and a cylinder hangs from a hook placed through hole B as shown above. The mass of the bar is equal to the mass of the cylinder. and The location of the center of the mass of the bar is at the center of hole D. In this configuration, the bar cylinder remains motionless, but is free to rotate around the peg in hole C. Frictional forces acting on the bar are negligible. So for part A, two additional cylinders, identical to the one shown, can be hung on the bar by hooks from any of the open holes so that the bar will be in rotational equilibrium when all three cylinders are hanging from it, from which two holes should the cylinders be hung and briefly explain your reasoning. So remember that the cylinders and the bar itself all have the same mass. So what you need to figure out is where we have a net torque equal to zero. We don't have to worry about net forces, just net torque. So you've got the bar itself, which is going to tend to rotate clockwise. The cylinder is going to make it the cylinder in B, anything at A or B is going to make it rotate counterclockwise. Anything in D, E, F, or G, including the bar itself, whose center of mass is at D, will rotate it clockwise. So we need to balance this out. Um, if the bar rotates, it will rotate around C, so we need to add the same torque to the left and right of C. Uh, the only available torque place to the left that's open is block A, and that's two hooks, two holes from C. So what we have is block B, which is one hole from C, block A, which is two holes from C, the bar itself, which is one hole from D. Um, the block B is going to rotate it, like I said before, counterclockwise. Block D is going to rotate it counterclockwise, and those are offsetting itself each other at the moment. So the only place we can go on the left is block A, and that's two holes away from C. So our other cylinder, which is the same mass, has to go two holes away from C. So that needs to be at E. So the answer here is you need to put one at A and one at E. So there's two points on the rubric there, one for identifying holes A and E. And then where it says briefly explain your reasoning, you get that point for indicating that the torque, the net torque would equal zero or the torque would balance. For part B, you need to scroll down and see we've got two cases there. A uh, case one where we have a cylinder on uh, two to the left of the peg and case two where we have a cylinder two to the right. So the question is here, in both cases, the bar is released and there's angular acceleration because the net torque is not equal to zero. So is the magnitude of the angular acceleration of the bar cylinder system, in case one, larger than, smaller than, or equal to the magnitude of the initial acceleration of the bar cylinder system in case two? So in a paragraph, we're going to explain our answer. First, we're going to give our answer, and then we're going to explain why. So again, the peg is not in the center. So even if there's no additional mass, if we just put the bar like this on peg there, it's going to rotate clockwise because the center of mass is to the right of the bar. Now, in case one, we have a mass that's going to make it rotate counterclockwise. So that uh, somewhat mitigates the center of mass moving. Um, so, if the, if the cylinder and the bar are the same mass, in case one, the bar will rotate counterclockwise. But in case two, the bar is causing it to rotate clockwise, and the weight is also going to help it rotate clockwise. They're not can canceling each other out at all, so we're going to get more bang for our buck in case two. So the uh, angular acceleration should be more in case two, or less in case one, however you want to say that. Um... So the rubric for that, okay? And this is, you know, you're writing the paragraph and we're going to get used to this. Um, but you get one point for identifying that it's case two uh, that is the answer. One point for identifying that there's more net torque in case two. 
my notes say if you said case one, but then said it's because there's more net torque, you get this point, right? Um, even if you said case one, which is wrong, but then said, oh, it's case one because there's more net torque, you're getting that point because you're, you had the right explanation, you just chose the wrong answer. One point for identifying that the moment of inertia is the same in cases one and case two, because in both cases, the cylinder is two holes out from the center of the peg, so moment of inertia is the same. One point for identifying and describing Newton's second law for rotating objects, which is tau equals I alpha, the net torque equals the moment of inertia times alpha, and then one point for a logical relevant argument that addresses the question. So that's part B, five points for those things. So then they added on a new situation here, part C. In a new scenario, a different uniform bar is held by a horizontal peg as shown above. The bar is initially motionless, but it's free to rotate around the peg with negligible friction. A ball of clay is dropped onto the bar in the position below, and the clay collides with and sticks to the bar. So here we have an inelastic collision, a perfectly inelastic collision. Part C says during this collision is the linear momentum of the clay bar system constant and justify your answer. Uh, so the answer is that the linear momentum is not, conser not conserved because uh, gravity is an external force that's working on the system. So again, linear momentum is not conserved if an external force acts on the system. So the answer for C is no. And the reason is because gravity is an external force. So one point for saying no and for identifying an external force, and that force is gravity. D asks the same question. During the collision, is the angular momentum of the bar about an axis through the center of the bar constant? Justify your answer, and again, the answer is no. Remember, the parameter for angular momentum being conserved is that there can be no external torque. Now, this question is different than dropping the gum on the record player, because in that case, the record player was rotating perpendicular to that gum dropping. So there was no external torque on that system in the direction of rotation. This is different. This bar is rotating around that peg, and that certainly is a net external torque on that. So one point for saying no, and one point for identifying no external torque. So for some reason, there was two points for C and one point for D for essentially this Sorry, one point for C and two points for D for essentially the same answers. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's how that goes. I hope it helped.